and we're back with Wall Tactics, and we're here to talk about orc combos and tactics. So, boys, we're going to go over some combos of leaders with their unit compositions, go over the abilities that we're going to be using to maximize those combinations, and also sprinkle in some stratagem, understanding, and capability. Some of these you might be familiar with, these. some of these you probably won't be. Um, this is a mixture of fluffy, strong, fun, everything you can think of. So let's get tactical, boys. Starting with one you are most likely familiar with. I call this Bad Ruck Surprise. So to do this combination, you need one liter of Captain Bad Ruck, of course, and a mech, the simple mech, the little mech with the three wounds that gives the ability of plus one to hit to any vehicle unit that it selects. You need a truck, obviously, five to ten flash kits. Ten flash kits is the most viable. Now, the tactic behind this is putting the truck with Bad Rook and the mech into strategic reserve. You then would disembark the mech, just the mech, on the turn that you need to get the efficiency output from Bad Rook and the boys, but they're going to be still embarked in the vehicle. Now, some of you might be wondering, am I allowed to do that? Yes, and let me go over embarked units and reserves. So the rule is units embarked within a reserve model can disembark in the turn that model is set up. When they do so, they cannot be set up wholly within nine inches horizontally of one or more enemy units. They count as have mating a more normal move, and they cannot declare a charge this turn, otherwise to rule state, but they can otherwise act normally in a and the remainder of the turn. Now, let's remember, the mech not only gives plus one to hit, but when he's within three inches of that said truck, he will be a lone op, so he will not be an eligible target to shoot. So you can use him to score a secondary, possibly, or just keep him right there tucked in the mech and use him later in the turn. When you come in from reserve with this truck, you really just need to get the bumper to peak, a little bit of the truck's little bed to see. That's all you really need to do. Why? Because you need to understand that the truck is probably going to try to get popped in this next following turn. Therefore, you need somewhere safe to disembark Bad Ruck and the boys. So that's where we go into the tactic of keep the gets safe. So let's go over one more time. Bad Ruck surprise. You got a mech. You got Captain Bad Ruck. You got a truck. You got 10 flash gets. Putting them to reserve. Coming in from reserve. Dropping the mech out of the truck. Giving that same truck plus one to hit so you can maximize firing deck. Therefore, Bad Ruck and the boys are going to be hitting on fours. Just keep in mind, you do not get the data sheet ability from Captain Bad Ruck. You cannot re-roll the hit roll, all right? And you cannot pop lethal, but you do get sustain. So take that for what it is. Enjoy it. That is perfectly legal. If you've been considering it, that's how you do it. So let's move on to the docker wagon. Now, there's a bit more fluffy, but still under the same idea. The leaders are a mech for plus one to hit on the wagon. You still get to enjoy low enough. The bat wagon's a bit thicker. Now, keep in mind that you can move and disembark, so you don't have to deal with the shenanigans of coming in from reserve anyways. You add a shock attack gun to that unit because everybody likes a bit of shock attack gun tactics, right? Strength nine, minus four, D6 damage, plus one. Then you have the wagon, so you can maximize that firing deck 22. If you're using the killer cannon, right, which is a, a kill cannon, excuse me, which is a more powerful, I believe, strength 9 minus 2, 2 damage uh, cannon, then your capacity for this wagon is only 12, right? Therefore, you go into this with, yes, you read that right, some luas. So you can either pick two luas and a spanner, right, because the unit has to include a spanner. Or you can go up to 12 Lutas and three spanners. And of course, I always advise rockets on my spanners. Now, the eight Lutas and the two spanners being with the kill cannon, you don't want to pay the extra points for more Lutas. Put the shock attack gun and the mech. You still have enough points with the 12 capacity if you really want to enjoy that kill cannon like in the picture above. But if you want to have just a full docker going in, boom, you can just take advantage of that. Firing deck 22, if you want, you can add some burner boys in there, right? Not necessary. It makes the package super expensive, and it doesn't have the same threat range. But speaking of the ranges and the tactics, this package is averaging 47 to 50 shots within 24-inch range. You got the big shooters with the wagon has four of them. They have rapid fire, too. 
and you have the rockets coming from the spanners that are all d3 you have the actual main weapon that is d6 and you have the lava that is also d6 so on average you're getting 47 to 50 shots of course if you get closer with the ludas you get rapid fire um you get also rapid fire with the big shooters like i said if you get closer and then if there's blasts enemies or targets involved then you get blast so that is why we call this the dock wagon so ludas are pretty cheap right now the mech's kind of cheap the shock attack gun is underused a lot of people still have them from other editions so i want to give a shout out to the dock wagon pretty durable will catch enemies off guard of course keep in mind there's a lot of cover in the game you know some power armor armies might just be like oh this is fine but a lot of units don't want to be hit with damage too great for dealing with small arms elites even voluminous enemy units so the daca wagon though it may not be the most competitive it's definitely the most orky right Whoa. so let's get that daca in boys but speaking of boys we have boss zag struck in the boys now this is a combo that is pretty much unheard of to most degrees a lot of people don't use it but we have seen it shout out to john anto bringing this to a major events and actually running around with zag struck in the boys so leader strictly bad drug unit five to ten storm boys now five to ten is because ten gives you the reliable volume you may need um you're more likely to survive overwatch you are going to have to roll and take some mortal wounds possibly so having a bigger unit means that your unit at least is more um survives let's say the the journey into combat right but let's talk about the tactic full throttle this is the ability you get from the storm boys unit most of the time people have the storm boys and they're just like hey i drop in i do an action da da, da I, I run around the table i do an action i score i score i get in the way here's what you do if you want your boys to get stuck in full throttle this unit is eligible to declare a charge in a turn in which it is advanced if it does so before making that charge move roll a d6 for each model in this unit on a one it suffers one mortal wound now you take that tactic and you add here we go so you have plus two to advance and charge this can be declared for units that are in reserve but i would personally advise that if you are going to run this combo keep it on the table now you do get reroll charges from reserve uh, for deep strike exactly from captain bad Ruck. so you could hypothetically drop in get a seven inch charge re-rollable with zagstruck you could run them solo and even attempt that but i like this on the table because you have a minimum yes a minimum of a 19 inch threat range right so you have your 12 inch movement you have your minimum one inch advance plus two so it'd be a three inch advance minimum and then you still have your charge the charge is at minimum two inches but you get plus two to that so that's another four so even if you're absurdly terrible at rolling you have an a, a obnoxious threat range here and the enemy has to take it into accountability for their staging units for their guns for their tanks for anything like that they actually have to take into consideration on a turn outside of the law so that is very much problematic for the enemy unit and it very much um, causes them to second guess their staging and counter punching and even shooting potential but like i said earlier keep in mind as this unit is susceptible to overwatch and being diminished a bit earlier than you really want so is this for killing elite units not necessarily but it is for tagging vehicles getting in the way wrapping trapping rhinos or just beating up a bunch of t4 let's say marines and power armor dudes or sisters of battle etc so zagstruck and the boys is a great way to project threat range um, without giving up the wall and without really throwing away the wall too early but keeping the enemies on their toes so that way they can't optimize their off their offensive potential into you every turn by just pre-measuring you and going well you can't reach me with this right but so zag trick and the boys is a sleeper pick you know take it for what it is i hope he survives into the codex but let's move on to this cheeky zod rod right so zag rod's always a bit uh slept on in some cases some of you guys are really into him but let's talk about what he does and how he can be used in this combination so leader zagra wart snagger keep in mind that on the wall he gives plus six inches to movement that's we need to keep that in mind going forward the units you need for this combo are truck specifically a dedicated transport which is a truck but that is why the scout capability works with the truck because it is a dedicated transport you only need a 10-man unit of grots with the run herder so 11 models and then you stick your dog right in there boom he got 12. So the tactics behind this, super runs. Zagra takes his nine inch scout, the 
dedicated transport now adopts his scouting move maneuver. You get to scout nine inches, place him nice and safely. You then move 12 inches to another safe building, let's say on the other side, uh, more on the edge of the battlefield, out of getting popped and shot possibly. And if you do get shot, just disembark safely. And the idea here is to actually stage for the wall. Because during the wall, Zod gives that unit six inch movements. Therefore, you have a three inch disembark from the truck, followed by a 12 inch move, followed by an advance, and then a charge on the wall. Of course, if your truck does get popped, you could even stack here we go with that and just go flying across the table, boys, just flying with them grots. Can you imagine? Did you understand what I just said to you? I'm sure you did, but let's hear it again. 12 inch movement on foot through the buildings with the boys with an advance in charge, just getting them stuck in. Of course, they have a five up invul on the wall and then he, Zadra gives a minus one to wound. So it's a hilariously obnoxious getting in the way, getting stuck in high OC unit. Of course, the Storm Boys can go punch something and probably try to do something similar, but this is the type of unit that if it tags you a vehicle and the vehicle can't punch it, obviously, and it doesn't take Overwatch damage, it's just going to straight out OC a bunch of things that don't see it coming. It's great for tying up enemy guns or scoring secondaries where you have to steal the enemy objectives. You know, Storm Hostile objective, um, steal, steal, uh, take enemy outpost, things like that. So, this is a cheeky Zagrot maneuver. You do need the truck. You do need just a small unit of the Grots. You know, some people like to run the big one, but this is how I would use it to get the most utility and the most cunning tactics behind Zagrot and the cheeky gits. Moving forward. Now, this is a known um, competitive powerful punching combination but i want to go over it for any new gets because it's very very useful in our current meta and it's a bit complicated so we have gaz and a beast so leaders gaz and makari you're going to be taking advantage of makari's lethal aura here and optional are the pain boss or the beast boss on foot I say optional because you really don't need them because Gaz is going to be taking Makari, let's say, is actually going to be what's giving this combo its value. But if you have the points, if you want to just keep boys alive from the pain boss, you can survive Overwatch. You can bring guys back to life if someone dies. You want the pain boss because you want to possibly put dev wounds as well and be hitting on twos. That's both perfectly fine. It just becomes quite expensive if you start adding leaders. You need, But what you do need is a 20-man unit of beast snagger boys. This is a specific combination for b snagger boys i know boys can do something similar but snaggers are better for this reason reroll hits against vehicles and monsters why is that better well it's not failed hit rolls that means you can just pick up anything that's not a hit a six let's say a sustain or lethal and reroll that so you're putting your 40 punches in and you're like uh well actually i'm going to declare unbridled want carnage because the tactic behind this is only on the wall, because it is uh, taking advantage of Makari's ability, you need Unbridled Carnage to get crit fives. That way, you have sustained and lethal on hit on hit, uh, rolls of five, right? So you have sustained and lethal on hit rolls of five. Compound that with the re-rolls from the Snagga Boys means that anything that isn't a five or a six, you pick that back up and you roll it again because it's automatically wounding and automatically giving you more hits. This is a very reliable combination for killing almost any vehicle mon and monster that's taking a three up save, including, yes, including Katans. If you get lucky, you might tear down two, but don't be greedy unless it's a full unit, you can get everybody into combat. So, and then you probably want the base boss, beast boss for that. But this unit is reliably chewing through so many vehicles and monsters that try to get in your way with pure volume. It gets around that damage reduction. It punches enough volume through the feel no pains. It's a great combination as well as high OC unit that the enemy will then have to prioritize and try to erase from wherever it is on the table. So you really get to dictate the battlefield momentum, the battlefield offensive output, and all the damage you're getting going forward. So it feels really, really good. This combination can be used with normal boys, etc., etc. But this is how I like to run it in our current meta if you are into running mobs of boys. Do you need a wagon? No. Do you need anything transports or anything like that? No, not necessarily. Just have the boys and gas and be safe. You know what to do, Git. Get unbridled carnage. Now, this one is a bit of a contentious um, 
combination. That's because I would strongly advise that you speak to your TO after you watch this video and decide if you're going to try this. Um, but as I understand and how TOs that I am play with and am around and communicate with and other people that we've discussed this with, we all believe this is how this combination works. So take this going forward and I'll give you my reasoning for it. So leaders in this combination for down for the double wall is the knob with wall banner and gas ghoul. Now, let me read the knob with wall banner capability and then I'll read Makari's ability. That way you can understand the wording that I'm using to reason this capability so that it's an actually viable combo. Now, knob with wall banner. Once per battle at the start of the battle round, this model can use this ability. If it does, until the start of the next battle round, this model unit gains the benefits of the WA ability as if you had called a WA this battle round. Yes, I did turn put it in red and underline it. Ah, A. A is in A WA, not the WA, A WA. Now we have Makari slash Gaz or a banner ability. While friendly orc units is within 12 inches of Makari, if you have called A WA this battle round, Melee weapons equipped by this model in the unit have lethals by the models in that unit have lethals ability. Now, like we said, ability as if you had called a wa, and this says Makari, if you have called a wa. Um, so of course, talk to your TOs. Some people might say this isn't a vibe, this you can't use this, it's not real. I would argue they're arguing semantics. Um, but this is a great way to either use 20 boys for this combo or 10 knobs with the power claw. Now, keep in mind, you still want to pop Unbridled Carnage for this, and you can pop Here We Go if you want that early game pressure. I don't advise that you use a transport necessarily because you can pop Here We Go, but if you do, it's good for staging your knobs. Now, this combination projects a terrifying uh, threat combination early in the game, just like we talked about with Zog Zag, uh, boss Zagstruck's combo. A lot of high-level players or people who are familiar with Orcs We'll just simply pre-measure you and ask you, especially if you're going second, are you calling the wall? Are you calling the wall? And then you, they understand to not be in range of you. This combination really puts them on the back foot earlier in the game and also keeps respect for longer in the game because the enemy now knows if I get within range of and this unit, that is whatever you choose to combo with, if it's boys or knobs, can now hit me as if it was the wall on a turn that I'm not expecting have the durability from the wall, and then get an army-wide wall the following turn. So this is a tremendously powerful if you use it in tandem and you understand its capabilities. Like I said, though, and like I advise, you want to ask your TO going forward if this is uh, before you use this going forward because it is one of those combinations that can be contentious. But I would argue they are arguing semantics and they're scared of the wall. So... These are the combinations that I wanted to put forward. And keep in mind that the real tactic behind orcs are here we go, here we go, here we go, boys. So at this point, I'll take a quick look at the chat, see what you gets got to say. Make sure I'm not missing something. Put in your questions in case I missed anything or you have any more questions. I wanted to keep this short, concise, to the point to a certain extent. We do have other very, very um, useful and informed videos about stratagems that also be used in tactics and combinations, which we will show you going forward. So let's see what you guys got. So someone asked, is cereal real? No. Uh, soup, no, it's not. So, so it says, uh, I'm actually curious if with full, full throttle, we're allowed to give the mortal wounds to Zagstruck and avoid using boys by losing his feel no pain. Um, I believe so, actually, because it's the bodyguard unit and you can put mortals on. He can just take those onto himself because they're mortals. Um, but it says to roll for each unit uh, model in that unit. So I have to actually think about that again. I've never considered that because I usually want Zach to survive if he's so straight. But he does have the six that feel no pain. So it's actually quite possible. Um, then we have, oh, shout out. Finally got to catch a stream. Yeah, we do our streams every Wednesday and Friday. Some of the videos and streams that we do are more of a short tactical ability. And, and with, it's a short tactical video. 
and we like to do these sometimes every Fridays. On Wednesdays, we always do our list reviews of the meta and everything going forward. So um, I'm glad you're be here. We have a bunch of videos that we do on Wednesdays. Another Wombo combo is the Pain Boy using his models to bring uh, D3 models back and then set them in front to gain plus two inches. And then I like here, he says, uh, Dominuk Perla. He says, now nah, with Wall Banner, 100% doesn't benefit Makari's banner. Oop. Banner, this is fairly clear in the raw. In the raw. Now, you argue that, yet um, many events and TOs would disagree with you. And that's why GW is actually, it's actually important that all of us as the org community go forward and question GW on this. I really think that it's important that in this community, the part of why I wanted this community to be established, is that we come to a consensus and under agreement and actually present ideas and arguments so that GW can become aware of these. Because usually the org community is a bit laid back, a bit known as fluffy and humorous. And questions like this don't be directly aren't directly answered by GW sometimes, right? Um, so I believe it was FLG at their yeah at their at their last event in Vegas. They argued, they ruled that you could actually use this ability. I didn't want to use them as an ultimate source because some people play in Europe, some people, you know, play in Australia. Um, so it is up to your TO more than it is up to FLG. But you know, frontline gamings when they went up to LVO and they actually put forward, and I can share this in my Discord if any of you guys want, they actually argued and judged that you could actually double down on Makari's wall ability with the wall with wall banner. So I respect everyone's ability. You guys are I'm, I'm, I'm understanding and I, under, I respect your opinions, but that's why it's actually more important that you ask your TO because what I say and what you say doesn't matter. What your TO judges is what actually matters. So with all due respect, FLG ruled one way, your TO might rule another way. That's why I gave the caveat going forward to keep that in mind. So, and then does Makari trickle? Yeah, and then we see here, it was from FLG, and I guess WTC. I don't know WTC ruled that as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate the question. I think it's very important that you ask that because I'm sure someone um in the comments we'll be asking the same question or we'll be getting ready to comment it and yell at us for this so that's why i gave the caveat hey what i say is just me what you say is just you what the to says to each event you go to is what you're going to go by regardless that's why it's important that you ask the judges you ask them before you submit your list and then you make it around that so either way Great topic, great conversation with the Orc Codex coming out. We're going to have more tactics, more lessons to go forward. That's what we're here for. We have all these guys, all these war bosses in our community with different ideas, different tactics, different questions and answers from all over the world. That's why we get together, join our Discord, give your thoughts. Of course, it's fine you disagree with me. I'm an Orc. I like to fight. You want to come get some teeth knocked out, I'm here for it. So we can argue cunning as well as brutal. So... Either way, there's only one thing to keep in mind is don't cross a wall because we knock your teeth out.